Yes. Hello guys and uh, welcome back. We are here for round number three. I apologize for the technical difficulties earlier on as uh, there was a little bit of issue with OBS, but it is sorted now. So uh, we are about to start for round three, but um, before we get uh, too stuck into the action again, uh, I just want to repeat some of the messages that I had uh, earlier on. Uh, So yeah, I just want to thank everyone who has uh, given me stars so far on the stream. I really appreciate the support. I love you guys all. Um, this is my uh, full-time job, so to speak. So uh, any support I can get, I, I really appreciate it. So thank you to those who have given the support, those who have uh, liked and shared the, the post. Really love you guys a lot. So um, we are about to get started with this uh, next round here. I think almost all the teams are in here. Now, just an update for the teams. Now, we do have um, Team 18, there's a change. So uh, Team Retired has gone out and it is filled in by um, Battle Arena Elites. So Battle Arena Elites will be coming in for the next two rounds here as Team Number 18. And um, Team 17 have given themselves a name. They are now called Nasi Ayam Sadap. So, uh, very cool name there. And uh, yep, we do have uh, all the other teams I think are the same. So we will be getting started. We're just waiting for Team 12 as well as uh, Team 7 to finish up getting their players in. So yeah, any of you guys on the stream have any comments or feedback, please do let me know. I am always looking to try and see how I can improve this stream. If you know about any other scrims that needs a caster, do let me know. Uh, if I'm free, I would love to cast it. Exactly what I like to do. I also cast um, the Scrim City games uh, sometimes. So Scrim City is usually every Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So I'll be trying to cast some of that. And um, and uh, I think uh, the Battle Arena wise, we will be seeing um, more frequent scrims in the in the future. I think they are trying to do uh, every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So if you want to join. The, the battle arena scrims make sure that you join the their discord which i've included their link in the description below uh this post so please do check it out and make sure that your team can get a spot here um i know that there are going to be a lot of um, tournaments that are upcoming uh so every bit of practice will help in that sense so uh like this weekend we have starting the malaysian qualifiers for the pubg uh, malaysian singapore championship 2018 so that will be having four different qualifiers over the next four weekends and um, the final will be played on 13th 14th october at battle arena itself so make sure you tune in for that one and uh, of course this weekend there's also the omen hp challenge so that one the malaysian qualifiers are this weekend so um, a lot of things to practice for uh, at this stage so uh, just want to wish all the teams good luck who is participating in all these events and hope to see you guys uh, succeeding and getting those chicken dinners so we'll just be waiting a little bit longer as the final organization i think some maybe there's some uh, players who are not quite into the to the right spots here um so just waiting on that one So yeah, it's just a, a little recap from the last game. We did see that Gang FTY did manage to take home that chicken dinner in a very tense one-on-one -on -one situation with um, Team Retired. So Team Retired had four people up, and uh, I think it was Gang FTY with uh, two, and uh, MSK Poseidon with two players as well. But due to the fight between MSK Poseidon and uh, Team Retired, Gang FTY were able to take advantage and bring it down to that one-on-one, -on -one, which we saw M0 uh clutch out in that battle now of course there were a lot of uh, other strong performances i think we did see like team crayon able to uh survive for uh, quite a long time and really putting on a lot of hurt on the other um squads but unfortunately they got a little bit sandwiched between msk poseidon and um team retired so that was a bit unfortunate in that sense and um now we'll have to see who can take home the, the next two chicken dinners? 
Now, in game one, we did see Six Gaming take that victory. Um, fortunately, they did um, die after losing uh, a couple of their players in early fights there, but Hunter was really getting a lot of headshots with, uh, with his sniper rifle. So, I mean, he was doing exceptionally well. And he actually used both a Car 98 as well as the M24 in that game. So, showing his versatility there. A lot of people would just default back to what they know, the Car 98. So, um, it looks as though that we are loading in, guys. So, round number three will start imminently. So, we are back on Erangel. We will be playing uh, the fourth round on Miramar again. So, a little bit of rotation. All games tonight are on FPP mode. So, that should be quite uh, in sync with what we see uh, being the format with our current teams. Not current teams, our cur the current tournaments that are in the region. And uh, we are about ready to get started with Aaron Gell here. Just one minute on the clock here as we get ready to start. So looking at this uh, first flight path, we do have a western side start going all the way down to Novo. So there's going to be a huge portion of the map which is currently unoccupied and uh, or rather not going to be easy for teams to access but as we did have seen in the previous rounds and in the competitive uh, games that we're used to seeing uh, that teams will want to try and secure vehicles as soon as they can just to help with rotation and a lot of teams like to take their vehicles and go to the less populated areas of the map make sure they can have a stress-free looting uh, period and everything but it'd be interesting to see now after the first round having gone down who will go to these hotspots like Military Island in particular? That's a uh, game on Erangel. It was uncontested. So let's get stuck into the action here. So the plane is now coming in. I think last time a lot of teams were dropping very early. Of course, it was a Severny start for the plane. So let's see whether or not that, that's going to happen here as well. straight away we see that there are a number of teams uh, BAE deciding to drop out early same thing with Team Crayon we have MBT also dropping out we have Team 6 or Kaki Langar dropping out here um, and then we see quite a few actually there's another team I can't quite see who they are uh, going to South George together with uh, Team Crayon now other teams are, oh, there's quite a number of teams around military base. So Geek Fam is going back to their home, so to speak, and they will be sharing it with Team Quacker. Now, Gang FDY looks as though they're going for the farmland here, quite central, and they will guarantee, uh, well, if they stay alive, they will guarantee uh, easy transition into the cer next circle, potentially. Now, Frostfire likes that Milta area. They are going there straight off the bat here, and uh, yep. Yeah, Pochinki will be occupied by Power Rangers. It does seem like Koyak Gaming is actually also holding up in the same place here. So in South George, we see here that this is Killer Clown. Squad number 12 is dropping here. They are trying to secure um, vehicles, but it looks as though that Nick Gen long dropping here gets headshot in the air by Melting. So Melting's able to get that first knock and uh, looks as though that they should be able to secure that first kill for them as well. Now, Circle has revealed itself. It is quite central, a little bit on the western side here. Now, other teams are um, facing off against each other. FTY, Allen's getting a knock on Nasi Ayam Sada. So, Nasi Ayam Sada losing Yu Sami. Pattern a lot is coming around here with his uh, own vehicle, but it doesn't look as though they're going to be able to. Oh wait, sorry, this is another team actually, Team Extense. Um, so Team Extense also deciding to go for the same spot. So Alan's will be aware of his presence here, but Patron a lot doesn't really have much in the way of uh, gear here as he is forced to uh, 
go inside the bathroom, but yeah, I mean, it didn't really work out for him. But hey, you, you gotta go, you gotta go. And it looks as though Team Infinity here, um, trying to make their way into Pachinki here, but I think Koyak Gaming not having any of it, but, um, but actually it's Koyak Gaming who loses two of their players here. And uh, it does look as though the FFG, well, it says that they're eliminated, but I don't think that that is correct. No, FFG is not is not dead yet, but they did have one player who drowned. He could have been AFK or had have been disconnected so far. So G7 trying to turn up the hurt here as uh, Koyak is trying to fight for the lives. They already lost some so did. And uh, Seven cleans the rest of the players up here, leaving uh, only I call Joe left up alive. Now I do apologize if I. Don't pronounce everyone's names correctly here. Uh, I'm trying my best. Now, Extense is trying to rotate through this area that's currently occupied by FDY. I'm looking as though that they want to give them a, a few more kills, potentially, but they do manage to get away just in time here. Now, you have seen that Killer Clowns have decided to move up to North George here, away from the presence of uh, Team Crayon, where they actually did lose one of their players even before he touched the ground there so Melting's coming out with that nice shot with the SKS um, and of course we do see uh, squad number five over here this is BN Power so BN Power is making their move also towards uh, North and South George from the looks of it um, now it does look as though that there's only two players left alive for Power Ranger now they did face a lot of problems facing off against Koyak Gaming so Koyak Gaming did manage to get some back here Leaving only uh, Ash 7 and 7 up. Now, other teams are making their way a bit. Now, we do see uh, Battle Arena Elites deciding to move into the uh, northern Gatka region here as they try and get on top of the high ground here. Maybe stop a lot of rotations from coming in. It is a decent position to start moving around and you get good scouting information, able to spot the movements of their other respective teams here. Now, Savior did die, unfortunately, uh, due to altercation with Team Quacker here as Team Quacker takes up shop in the main military base with four men up uh, alive here. But Gifam have decided to move to the western side of the island, get the build, get uh, a little bit more looting in, and maybe they can make the rotation and gatekeep uh, Team Quacker from getting in further. Now, Frostfire is looting up in Milta here. They have um, very much made that their favorite spot here. Now FFG, they did lose one player in rotation, but they have um, all of Lupovka all to themselves. So not too much of a problem for them yet. You know, we do see a lot of teams with just a few players able to go the distance. Of course, you have to play your cards right. Make sure you don't run into any uh, risky situations here. And uh, of course, like Pochinki could potentially be a risky situation, but I guess that's exactly what Koyak Gaming and... Uh, Power Ranger knew what, what might have happened here, but being able to get the, the loot in this town as well as having that very central position makes it worth fighting for. Now, the tactics would be different in a, a tournament. Now, you would maybe want to decide to try and drop into these central high loot areas if you can. If you're able to gain dominance against other teams, then it helps to play the mind games where you make sure that other teams don't actually drop in the same place as you in the future. And, uh, yeah, so that, of course, is something more for the tournaments. Now, this is a scrim. It is the chance to try out new things here. Other teams also want to go head-to-head -head against each other, if nothing else, for bragging rights and, and whatnot, you know. So, we do see BAE here looting up in this uh, Gatka area. There are not a lot of teams in this area. Squad number 6, or Kaki Langar, I think, is uh, nearby here, so they are actually skirting a little bit away from this particular zone now Loki's is on the the mountain here offer offering a good bit of vision as he tries to scout out the, the area in Gatka for his teammates other other teams are starting to make their way in geek fam is starting to move inside the circle here but this little, looks as though Koyak gaming here is still locked in a little bit of a deadlock here but at a legendary seven able to knock and eliminate him, so that is going to be it for Koyak Gaming. They go out in 20th position here. And uh, we still got 19 teams alive. 68, uh, 68 players. So we're still in store for... Uh, action. 
here as we see Mamparang trying to take some shots at Frostfire as they rotate through here. Not able to add to their kill tally here. Gang FTY of course winning in our uh, second round of the evening here. And uh, they'll be looking to see whether they can bring it home here. But Gang FTY all taking shots at Elliot. They must have done really something to um, upset Gang FTY as he tries to continue his rotation while he scouts for a good place for them to hold up. Now, uh, Team Crayons here has spotted one of the rotations coming in from one of the players in um, in Killer Clown, but he has decided to give them the drop here as he manages to get on the outside balcony here as uh, the rest, rest of the players are still very much looking for him. Now, they are a little bit perplexed as to where he might be still very much in the vicinity here, but I think he manages to stay stealthy enough. I'm actually not sure that um, Team Crayon even heard him in the first place here, so Kira is actually able to stay alive just by playing uh, Splinter Cell a little bit over here. Uh, we are, of course, playing Battle Royale in PUBG, so um, it is a mix of a number of games here, and that, that's going to always be the beauty of this genre. So. Looking here at North George, we do have here BN Power occupying on the eastern side here. There are two team players, well, two other play players from Killer Clown. They already lost one of the players, I think, in rotation. Or oh, not rotation, but got shot down by Meltings with his flat cannon. So that's unfortunate there. Now we do see other teams all trying to rotate here and try and take these central compounds here. The four players from squad number six up here are going to be shooting at Geekfam as they... Moving on through, Mahdi deciding to abandon his bike here. They might have shot out the tires here. Now, KNY God is a little bit further downhill. He should be able to pick up Mahdi here. It's just whether or not he gets shot in the back of the head. Uh, but the terrain should be in their favor, and uh, it looks as though they should be able to get away from Fleoflux and company. Now, meanwhile, others are moving in. Chiao Wei putting up some shots on Tyler here, but luckily for MBT, he manages to get away unscathed. And um, he's just moving around to try and uh, get much from this Gatka region as possible. Now, Geekfam is caught in a little bit of a crossfire here between MSK Poseidon in the south and uh, BAE. Now, they have managed to take this central, or rather the singular building here, but are constantly taking fire. It should be big enough for them to uh, command enough uh, map control in this stage of the game, but they won't be able to rotate very easily in the future if they actually do have to move given any um, drastic movements by future circles phase one is almost complete one minute left to its closure uh, voidless is still in Cerverni for MSK Poseidon here so he's gonna have to start moving now BN power is moving deeper inside here but they're not quite close enough to killer clown um, they are apartment complex and I think we did see in the last game San Martin the Difficulty of pushing up into these big multi-story buildings where uh, a team of four can be cut down by two players as we did see Team Infinity able to mow down um, I think it was MBT in game number two. I, I can't quite remember but there was that incident in San Martin there. So it looks as though that in school uh, Frostfire have managed to find a home here. Not sure if there's too much loot there. Um, I don't recall there being a team that dropped inside that zone so we'll have to see. Uh, oh, they do also have the apartments. Oh, so likely they this place was not much just yet. Now, Circle is going to reveal itself and it has shifted hard south actually. It's still covering Pachinki and everything, but all this area is cu currently unoccupied. So, Frostfire, FT, Gang FTY um, are going to probably be moving very soon. But in this Gatka region, we do see a lot of rotations. Infinity here, squad number three, moving in on foot as um, we see Asmix for MBT also just trying to drive away BAE. Trying to make the rotation as difficult as possible, but they also have to make their move pretty soon as they're not really inside the zone. They probably want to take up a more central position here. Now, especially there is the potential with this circle that the circle can still cover a big body of water. It's only at the fourth circle where you do see that the circle will prioritize being on land here. So all these teams are making their rotations right at the same time here. With uh, squad number 8, MBT here, moving in, but uh, they are getting shot from uh, Fleoflux and the rest of squad skits here. 
And as they try to make things as difficult as possible, I think k -Bites actually got shot by his teammate a little bit there in that exchange. But they managed to hold up into this uh, barn complex, which is south southwest of the Pochinki here. Now, it is getting increasingly chaotic here as uh, all these teams are rotating through the same zone here. And uh, Melting's trying to pave the way for uh, Team Crayon here, but he's going to be running straight into... Uh, team 18, uh, BAE, but he manages to get the knock, but Loki's able to back up his teammate here. And um, they should be able to move in and claim that bit of loot here. Now the rest of Team Crayon here is also kind of trying to do their, their utmost to uh, get into a good position here, but they're not going to be able to really save their team member. DJ Lowell or MSK Poseidon shooting at Team Crayon as they are trying to rotate through this zone here, not able to make any connections in that instance there. Jingu also trying to chip in here. Now, it does look as though Squad 15 here is um, just across from uh, Krasenia here, the lone MSK Poseidon player. So, it's going to be a little difficult for him to disengage from this particular battle here. But he has to try and do his best here. And uh, MSK a little bit separated at the moment. They have some players in Getka region and... Um, now they have to contend with fighting these full four-man squads here in this region. Um, but it looks as though that this region is getting crowded very quickly here. As we do see Aaron moving north for Team Infinity here. As uh, Actually, he bangs into a rock here, unfortunately. Luckily for him, not too many of the players from Squad 15 were looking at him in that instance here. But Brennan actually taking hits from Insane Floyd as uh, Team Crayon trying to stamp their foot down on this area of the of the map don't come here or we will screw you up and um, they are still quite central so they are able to potentially rotate to any location that they need to now uh, we do see here that uh, other teams are rotating in from the northwestern part of the island here as uh, BN power uh, takes this compound on the edge of the circle here now, we haven't seen too much Edge of the Circle play except by necessity due to uh, increased squad strength. Those teams which are 4 men up, we've re we haven't really seen too much of them. Though of course, we did see that big head-to-head -head battle that BN Power had with what was, I think, uh, Nasi Ayam Sadat in game number 2. Now, meanwhile, we do have uh, the two players from um, Power Rangers still occupying the area in Pochinki here and it is still inside the zone but they just do need to think about moving Jingu actually getting eliminated by um, Team Crayon here now what 6 and uh, are still very much on this high ground they are still trying to make it tough for teams to rotate Circle has moved to the more central region here and uh, favoring squad six very much so so Krasenia got shot in the back as he tried to retreat from this and uh looks as though starlight standard should be able to chuck up the frag now other teams are trying to make their way in here but it looks as though gang fty might be trying to catch uh nasi i am sadap unawares here as they knock out Hector's jack here man Parang able to knock him down with the ump here Dick Gina actually uh, moving a little bit further away, but still hitting, taking fire from Gang FTY. He has decided to vacate the vehicle here as he tries to escape here. But Allens has got him in his sights. He's trying to get away as best he can. He is in the blue zone though, so it's probably just a matter of time. And he gets sniped by Allens mid-air. And that is going to be it for Nasi Ayam Sadat. So other teams are trying to move in here. Voidless is starting to rotate through this zone, which is currently occupied by... Uh, six gaming, so I am Cold Blood acting as a little bit of a scout, being in the tower in the middle of the field here. And Raid really going for quite a spin here, so luckily he's able to regain control of the vehicle and move out. Otherwise, I don't know what kind of trouble he would be in, especially Team Sickness is on that high ground, shooting at anyone that's driving past in that zone. And uh, MSK Poseidon just trying to join up here after losing Crescenia earlier in the game. Now, EAE is moving uh, moving down south a little bit here as they try and uh, take aim at those MSK Poseidon players here. Uh, Sophia getting eliminated by 6 Gaming here as Rotation is coming in from Frostfire. Frostfire in a spot of bother here. Youngwei trying to get Demon Eater up. He has deployed the smoke. 
Should be okay for the time being here as they're not really within grenade range. Elliot taking up position in the southernmost um, building inside the, the Pachinki town. Now, we do see here that Gang FTY have decided to make their move closer towards uh, the hill here, which is currently occupied by Squad 6 and uh, to their west. It is uh, BAE, but uh, MBT are also very close by here as uh, we do see here that FFG have rotated to this small tiny shack here when they have the full four-man squad of MBT on the edge here. It's just whether or not that they are able to recognize the situation and toss in a nice nade here to finish them off pretty much because I don't think that they have a, a fourth player elsewhere. Now other teams are also moving in. Uh, Team Cracker here already having moved from the military island, able to knock down Frosty Sith and get him as well as uh, Felberg. So Infinity goes down here in 17th place. So Team Cracker able to chalk up another few kills to add on to that one that they claimed from uh, Geek Fam earlier on in the game. Geek Fam have uh, met, rotated to the northwestern side of this circle here, but it looks as though huge battle erupting here finally between. Um, MBT as well as um, FFG, but FFG going all the way down here as they lose all three of their players as they try to bread, uh, rush into the, that building which is currently occupied by MBT. So MBT is going to be okay for now. Now the next circle is about to show itself and again it is... Uh well, not again, but I mean it is a decent shift here to the south as uh, we see Team Crayon and Team 15 in being the biggest winners here. Now Gang FTY are in the circle as well as... Um, Team 6, but they are going to face all the rotations here coming in from all these other teams. There's a big field here, there's no cover, there's one other compound here which isn't really taken, but Priscinia already paid the price from going too close to Team 15 here, so he might be in, in for some of the same treatment here. And um, MSK Poseidon still south of the hill here, they're able to knock down one of the players from um, Battle Arena Elites, and uh, DJ Lowell Pointless just trying to hold the fort here. Is, um, there's only the two of them left for, for MSK Poseidon, so they're going to have to try and do the best they can. MBT should probably think about moving here. They do have that vehicle that was brought to them by FFG, so they do have that available to them, but Frostfire are quite separated here, but um, it looks as though 6 Gaming does have to vacate their, their building here. As we do see here, Gang FTY getting stuck into a big battle here with uh, squad number 6 here as three of the players go down for uh, Gang FTY, leaving uh, two players up left for... Uh, squad number six here, so only Dan Kirk is left here. He needs to uh, get a nice nade off here as he tries to survive and he manages to uh, get Cleo Flux. I'm not sure if that is down or or not here. And uh, looks as though Dan Kirk is just trying to get the res off for his team members. And it looks as though Squad Six is kind of trying to do the same here as uh, they also try to get Allen's up. Mumparang unfortunately expiring already here as he got finished off earlier on. Now Squad Twenty. Um, Lama, Lama, Lama is fighting out here with uh, 6 Gaming here. 6 Gaming try to move south a bit here, but they run into rotation problems and uh, it looks as though uh, Team uh, Quacker able to get in on the action and Gar Gary Young actually able to get a nice nade here, but they are also in the field of fire from Team uh, Quacker here. Sniper gonna go down to Quacker here, stealing the kill. Now Aaron Simple currently down as well and uh, Shazwan also goes down so that is going to be it for Lipak Mama. They go out in 14th position here. Now 6 Gaming not out of the woods yet. They do have Crack Gaming here it, making it difficult here. Danker actually goes down here and FDY having to bug out here. They only have M0 who's left available to them as uh, there's also only two players left from squad number 6 here so M0 just going to bug out here and try and get a good place that he can uh, call home for the time being here. But it's just a question of how quickly he gets evicted. Now, we do see here that um, Power Rangers have decided to rotate out right into the middle of the field. Into the full view of uh, MSK Poseidon. And it looks as though that uh, BN Power facing off with uh, Geek Fam here. Money going down. And uh, the kill will be confirmed here. Leaving only um, K and Y God all by himself here. He is lying prone here. He's going to try and stay alive as long as he can. Blue Circle has almost finished moving here. With uh, MSK Poseidon just trying to put more pressure and they managed to get a uh, nice shot on Ash 7 so he's going to go down here. And it looks as though that DJ Low will confirm that kill. 
Now, uh, MSK Poseidon will be a little bit inside the circle here, but it looks as though that squad number six here has actually spotted uh, VN Power here. And KNY God going to town here, lying in wait here, and able to kill those two remaining players from BN Power. And uh, he's still able to carry the torch for Geek Fam. So there are still 12 teams alive. So everyone will want to stay uh, as secure as they can without taking too many risks here. But Elliot able to capture I'm Cold Blood here as the last remaining team member from Six Gaming. So Six Gaming uh, not able to replicate the previous performance on Aaron Gale, where And now they go out in 12th position here. Now the Circle again favors the two main um well, two main teams in inside the the last one where we did have um, three players three players up for squad fifteen and uh, for a team crayon. Actually, there are also three players up for uh, team Quacker, but um, due to the lack of position there, maybe at a little disadvantage here. Now, Battle Arena League does have two players left up here: Imagine and Badman, trying to put some counter pressure onto the team members from team crayon. Now, they are inside the circle, they don't have to make any drastic changes, but they know that they probably have to uh, be mindful of those teams which are in the center of the circle. This is all trees and a hill right here, and uh, at the same time, this is all going to be open space here. So they definitely want to try and see how they're going to clear a path later on, as they uh, might have to rotate through this um, heavily contested area. Now, Team Quacker is trying to put the hurt onto Elliot as he's trying to get inside the circle as the last remaining team member from Frostfire, but they seem to have his number here, and uh, not only that, he's going to run very close to M0. M0 just trying to stay up here in his uh, very hidden position by his car, but if uh, any player looks too closely here, they might actually spot him. Now, Elliot is actually moving on this position here. And he sees M0 here, but not able to come out with it, and M0 claims the frag here and eliminates Frostfire in 11th position. Now, there are a lot of teams rotating right through here. Squad number 6 is in good position to stop them from coming, but MBT, sorry, they also have a high number of people. They have four people up here as they advance here as Tyler manages to spot K-Bytes. Now, whether or not he can spot the other remaining team member, now it looks as though MSK Poseidon also facing the, the wrath of uh, MBT here, but um, it looks as though Rexon getting uh, shot at from multiple directions here. KNY God is bring, bringing up the rear here, able to spot Rainzera, so he eliminates him, and that is going to be the last player left up for... Um, for squad number six who is down and he also gets another kill on MBT as he shoots Nob Nobby in the back here but he's taking a lot of fire here he runs into Asmix and a lot of problems now now we do have uh, MSK Poseidon here they are still alive here uh, um, DJ Lowell was able to be res by Voidless but they are facing problems from MBT as they come down the hill here Quacks uh, Team Quacker able to also get Voidless in that Exchange leaving DJ Lowell to try and rest his teammate in the smoke here. Now the other teams are not making very many uh, actions here, but it does look as though that um, Bel um, Battle Arena at least did manage to kill one of the players from Team Crayon here. Now Axmix does need to get in here. He is outside in the zone, so is Tyler here, but they need to be careful here as they are moving right inside the smoke here. And DJ Lowell able to get Axmix here, and Tyler also goes down. This time to Voidless, so that is it for MBT. This next circle favors uh, only uh, Team Crayon here. We already see Battle Arena Elite deciding to escape from the southern side of this um, this current zone. And uh, they need to actually start moving here. Big, uh, Big Blue Bird and Live Action will have spotted them as they were busy trading uh, long-range blows for quite a bit here. Now, we do see that this compound will finally have to be vacated by Team 15 here, as they have spent quite a, a bit of time here. Now, they are advancing on the position currently occupied by Team Crayon here, as they look to take that dominant position inside the, the next zone here. Now, uh, MSK Poseidon very stuck here after... They are being pinned in drastically by the team members from uh, Team Quacker here. Now, Kaxis actually sees them actually moving in here. So, uh, he's going to relay that to the rest of his team, mem team members. Starlight Standard going to put some uh, good shots there. As he does have the good field of vision here. But it looks as though that the players from MSK Poseidon are trying to make a 
Mad Dash here. The circle is closing in on them and time is not on their side here. As we do see here that Batman is caught out by live action here on the high ground with his SLR as he gets the headshot and only leaving Imagine up for Battle Arena Elites here. Now they are hidden behind the shack, one of the few pieces of hardcover that is still remaining here. But the nades are coming out here as they bring in the push and Imagine is uh, able to get down Big Blue Bird here. And he actually clutches it, taking out the remaining players from uh, Team Crayon here. And uh, now we are down to two, three teams, sorry. As we see that Team uh, Qu Quacker is coming in. Yeez did get knocked down here as he, they are trying to get inside the zone. It seems as though Screams and uh, I think it's Skyrex are currently occupied in the northern part of the zone here. But Yez, not sure that they're going to be able to get the res here. Frozen is actually uh, just posturing in that little ditch that he has as uh, the co remaining cover available to him. But he's not inside the zone. He's going to have to move a little bit more. But um, two players... Oh, sorry. Uh, Batman did die in that uh, instance over there. So imagine the last player for Battle Arena Elite. So leaving the main battle to be here between um, Team Quacker and Squad 15. So Yez will be bleeding out pretty soon, leaving uh, them down to three players. Uh, so it will be a three-on-three -three battle, but they do have a, a relatively uh, central position inside the circle here and will be able to offer um, some good crossfires as they look to spread out and make sure that the angles are difficult for Team Quacker to co overcome. But the next circle is very much in uh, Quacker's favor here as... Uh, the rest of Team 15 actually all need to, to move substantially here. Technically, Texas is still inside the zone here, but he doesn't have a fantastic position uh, as he is taking some fire already from Frozen. Um, now he is almost going to expire. Imagine taking his time to get out of there. Uh, but the, the crossfire from uh, Breaker is going to be pretty good here. It's just that they are... Getting singled out, Frozen doesn't have too much support from his other two teammates and uh, he's going to try and just prevent any advancement from the team members from Team 15. Now imagine is pulling up on the rear here. If he's lucky, he can strike at the right time and uh, secure second place as well as perhaps a kill or two. Um, but he has to play his cards right as even Squad 15 is not really inside the zone yet. So there is still a bit of distance to go here. But yeah, given that uh, Team Cracker does actually have a lot of long range at their disposal here, they're just trying to put a lot of pressure onto them and prevent them from getting in. Scream's actually able to get a, a knock on uh, Stan Starlight Standard and uh, looks like John C. Nobody is in the crosshairs of Imagine. Not pulling the trigger just yet, he's waiting for the right time. Oh, and he's going to try and throw the nade onto that smoke here. This could be big here. Could he steal all the kills here? As Frozen also moves up, knocks down Caxis. And uh, the nade is uh, good on Caxis. Um, Johnson, nobody, the last player left up here. And uh, imagine able to seal the deal here. As uh, now it's now a two-on-one situation. So he, if he can land a, a quick quick knock here. But Skyrex and uh, Screams look like they're in control here. As he is stuck behind uh, that tree here. Gilly suit or not, he is going to be finished here as the circle is moving in and I'm not sure what he can do. He has just a sliver of health alive here. Quacks, Quick Team Quaker does have 16 kills in this game. So a monstrous performance from them so far here. And uh, Imagine does manage to get off the heal here. And uh, Flashbang actually coming out here. Unfortunately, it's uh, a little too low here. But he actually puts a lot of hits on him. And Screams able to flank around the right side and gets the elimination. So 17 kills so f uh, well in this game for Team Quaker. And they take home the chicken dinner. So excellent performance from them. As uh, I think that's the highest kill total that we've seen so far for tonight's games here. So excellent play from them. And uh, we did see in second position, Imagine able to stay through until the very end. And he did wait for the excellent timing to come and ambush the uh, squad 15 guys here so he was able to take home six kills and uh really carry the torch for battle arena elites here um now in third place we had team 15 here so they managed to stay in that compound which was quite central for most of the circles but towards the end they did need to start to vacate there and uh they were a bit 
clustered together, not able to contend with the fields of fire off put up by Team uh, Quacker as um, they were slowly suffocated in that situation. Not to mention the fact that Imagine came and really stabbed them in the back here. Then in fourth position, we did have uh, Team Crayon here as uh, they managed to survive quite a bit, getting five kills in the process. And finally, in fifth place, we have MSK Poseidon. So we did see DJ Low and Voidless staying alive for much of the game. Krasenia and Jingu getting picked off in Gatka as well as uh, south of Pachiki uh, by their lonesomes, unfortunately. So they managed to take home four kills in that round. So that is it for round number three, guys. So um, you're currently watching the Battle Arena scrims for tonight. And uh, this is Play of the J. So we'll be back very shortly and bring you the last map on Miramar.